welcome to the Jukebox Podcast from WP Tavern. My name is Nathan Wrigley. Jukebox is a podcast which is dedicated to all things WordPress. The people, the events, the plugins, the blocks, the themes, and in this case, the importance of real-world WordPress events. If you'd like to subscribe to the podcast, you can do that by searching for WP Tavern in your podcast player of choice, or by going to wptavern.com forward slash feed forward slash podcast. And you can copy that URL into most podcast players. If you have a topic that you'd like us to feature on the podcast, well, I'm more than keen to hear from you and hopefully get you or your idea featured on the show. Head over to wptavern.com forward slash contact forward slash jukebox and use the contact form there. So, on the podcast today, we have Milan Ivanovic. Milan is a WordPress developer at Valet.io and is a WordCamp volunteer, speaker and organiser. He's the WordPress.org Global Translation Editor, WordPress Serbia lead and is now part of the WordCamp Europe alumni. As if that weren't enough, Milan is one of the lecturers of the WordPress Academy in Serbia where he has given talks and WordPress workshops. He's also a member of the theme review and community get involved teams. It's pretty clear to see that WordPress and WordPress events play a major role in Milan's life. And that's what this podcast is about. We're drilling down on why the community which surrounds WordPress is a key part in the success of the whole project. The recent hiatus of in-person events has meant that all the events moved online. Whilst this was a good stopgap, Milan, as you will hear, is pleased that real-world events are back. We talk about the importance of the WordPress community as a whole, as well as exploring what the situation is like in Milan's home country of Serbia. We discuss how Milan got started as a community member and the different roles that events like WordCamp offer people wishing to dip their toes in the WordPress waters. We also get into the subject of diversity and how Europe as a continent might face diversity challenges which differ from other parts of the world. Milan is an enthusiastic speaker and I'm sure that you'll get some new perspectives from listening to the podcast. If you're interested in finding out more, you can find all the links in the show notes by heading over to wptavern.com forward slash podcast, where you'll also find all the other episodes. And so, without further delay, I bring you Milan Ivanovic. I am joined on the podcast today by Milan Ivanovic. Hello. Hello. Very nice to have you with us. We're going to be talking about WordCamp Europe and WordCamps and community in general. First of all, Milan, would you like to just spend a moment introducing yourself? What's your background in WordPress? Yeah, would love to. I started really early with WordPress and just like looking for community back in Serbia. We, I didn't know that if you're looking for community, there isn't one. Like maybe you can start it. Uh, so 2013, I moved to Norway, and then all of a sudden they already had the meetups in place. So I helped organize those meetups, you know, just being there as a speaker, as a, one of the organizers. So I moved back to Serbia in 2014, and I was like, you know what? They already had one meetup and nothing happened from it. And then I just started a little bit with no expectations, like how many people will show up, how many people will jump in, just like started and see how it goes. 2014 was the first official WordPress Serbia meetup, and now we have 16 different cities with meetups across Serbia. Wow, that is that is really impressive. From everything that I've seen, and obviously I don't really know intimate details about your life, but from everything I've seen, you are really committed to the community, like more so than almost anybody, it feels like. Pretty much. I, I got hooked up. Like The first WordCamp for me was WordCamp Europe in Leiden 2013. I immediately knew that I need to help organize. I need. I saw volunteers dedicating their time. They're passionate. I'm like, yeah. How can I help? So they explained. Next year, follow the website. We're gonna open the call for volunteers, and then you can sign up. I think that it passed like one millisecond before I saw it. I'm like, yep, yep, filling in the form already. So my first volunteering, official volunteering experience, was 2014, 
already just like, yeah, I was at the registration desk. Letters A and B, the happiest person at the registration desk, me, just like smiling all over the place. Like, hello, welcome to work at <laughs> Europe. <laughs> but you've really taken it to heart and you committed an awful lot of time and yes. been involved in some of the biggest events that WordCamp in, well, in particular yeah. has to offer. Yeah. WordCamp Europe's and you were really influential and in all of that taking off. I like bringing people. Like I believe in like that all of us together, we can like push mountains. Mm. And when you see these guys, like they come to the conference and all of a sudden you have like a bunch of amateurs like in organizing the event, but they give it all organizing, doing like all of a sudden you see someone, you know, in charge for TVs, like workshops, pushing tables and stuff. Everyone is giving what they have. But if you collect hundreds of those like different people willing to make this event happen the best way possible, that was like heart touching for me, like in the beginning. So yeah, I've been involved like into organizing, started really slow and low, you know, just like being the foot soldier, working at the doors or like happening with the registration. Then, you know, my involvement grew over the years. So in 2015, was in charge like for a small registration desk. And then immediately we knew that we need to make this happen. In 2015, we had the first work camp in Serbia, work camp Belgrade, almost 200 people. And there was like, yeah, wow, this can really be a thing. Then we started with more meetups, more people got involved, more people willing to help in Serbia. Especially we had the growth like in work camp Europe. You see the Seville Vienna, when Vienna happened in 2016, we had like 2000 people. I'm like, Whoa, this was a big thing. The listenership for the podcast is pretty broad because there's so many people of all different walks of life consuming WP Tavern content. Just give us an insight into the kind of things that you could do if you volunteered. And the reason I ask that is I know for a fact that many of the people that I now have as very good friends in the WordPress community, they tell the story of, I didn't know. I didn't know there was a thing. I used the software because it was free and I enjoyed it. But no way. What? How could there be a community about software? That's just not normal. And yet here it is. Yeah. I mean, maybe some of the top 10 things that you've enjoyed or the jobs that you might find yourself in if you come to an event like WordCamp Europe and get involved. So I heard, I'm not 100% sure about the data, but looks like that we have like around 60% of first timers at this WordCamp Europe. Uh, we haven't had like in-person events three years now for Work Camp Europe. The last one was in Berlin, 2019. I think the power of this whole thing is our community. Just like people being here, being present, and then the networking simply happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see because of that diversity in knowledge, in backgrounds, different backgrounds, the more diverse we are, the stronger we are. Mm. That's why you end up with someone sitting next to and chatting with someone who actually put the code in the core of WordPress. And then you see someone who just like installed it and they are simply using it, not having a clue what's behind it. Like who put up the code, what's there. And then you see those two, the person's just chatting. Hey, what would you like to improve? Like, I think that's the power of this whole mess that we are into. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, networking and just like being present. That's what I think is the power of our community. If you do see like all those after movies or short interviews, when just someone goes, takes a camera and goes around and says like, hey, what is the only thing that you, that you like here? I think nine out of 10 would say community, community, because of community. We are here because of community and we are so supportive. We are highly opinionated community about everything, but we are so supportive. I strongly get that impression as well. That's lovely. This particular event, everybody's wearing a black T-shirt. Yeah. And there are black T-shirts everywhere. I mean, really everywhere, just in the corridor outside. Yeah. We're recording this. I think there's three people wearing black T-shirts. These are the people who volunteered their time for free. So there's people assisting you to find me so that we can have this interview. There's yes. people publishing the little lanyards that we wear around our neck. There's people that are putting up signage. There's basically people doing all sorts of hidden roles. You know all of this stuff intimately. There must be hundreds of different things. And if I was somebody that had never come across the community, I think there's a chance that I would think I don't code, I shouldn't go. But that's not the case. There's a job for everybody. Yes. So give us some of the sort of the things that you might encourage people to do if they volunteer for a WordCamp that first time? I got involved into volunteering because I wanted to make this event happen. When you see that your small role, doesn't matter like how small it is, makes a difference, Yeah, it's amazing. 
even if you're a mic runner, imagine that someone is expecting that mic and you like feel so powerful, like I brought that mic, like here is the mic, you can ask your question. Those small bits that we had like in Seville, I think we had around 70 to 80 volunteers plus the organizing team. In Vienna, we had 160. It's an army of people wearing the same color t-shirts. This year, we, I think they have 70 to 80 organizers and then 200 volunteers. Mm. That's why there's as many black t-shirts because everyone is having their shifts. Everyone is, you know, have a purpose. Everyone is just like enjoying the event and you see that they're all like happy, all smiling, everyone willing to help. I think like in the beginning, when we started the whole army of volunteers, you get to event and you don't know where the registration is. You don't know what to do after registration. You get a lanyard, like, how is it going? Like, should I just say my name? You say your name and you get a lanyard, you get a small goodie bag. Everyone is happy, but all the volunteers like guiding you like, hey, welcome to event, here's the coffee, here are some sessions. And there is something for everyone right. if they're willing to help. If you say that I want to help with, I want to be in a room, or I would like to be at the registration, or I would like to help carrying boxes, there is a job for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's a good thing. You basically don't need to be into the code. You can, exactly. like you said, you can carry boxes, you can print lanyards, you can guide people, you can put up signage. Yeah. There's just so many things. If I was on the organizing team at the level that you were in Berlin in 2019, in other words, you, you were really responsible for that event. How long before the door opened on the first day? How long before did you begin that planning process? And I'm just trying to get a measure of how many hours go into mm. that and how it trickles down and, you know, how you disseminate that and discover the volunteers. And basically, how does it all fit together? Oh, it's a, it's a long process. Mm. It's a long process because selecting the future city every year, Work Camp Europe changes country. For Work Camp Europe 2018 in Belgrade, me and the local team, we worked on it from September 2015 Wow! to make it happen in June 2018 because it's a long process. You need to prepare your local team because it was a team around 10 of us. You're just investing so much time. The first thing you need to work on is the application because we have that application process where you submit your application and it's usually like three to four cities, you know, fully prepared to organize the event. Then previous organizers, foundation, WordPress foundation, uh, we go on a meeting and then we talk about, we'll look at those applications and then we decide which city is that going to be. So for Belgrade, it was a long, long period because we had to prepare our local community as well to start with local meetups and just to educate people what actually Work Camp Europe is. We had the same like everywhere else, like people haven't had idea that you can all of a sudden, you could have a conference with like two, 3000 people that creme de la creme of WordPress community is going to be there. We had to like go educate people, do the meetups, do the all kinds of stuff just to prepare it for Berlin, their team, like I'm talking about the local team from Berlin. It was, again, long process for them as well, because they worked on application, then they submitted application, they got approved. And then you want that team, future team, to be on this year team, because you want them to see how it goes. Right. And yeah, just to educate them by watching and just like being involved. You need to have them in involved, like you need to educate them. So. It is a long process. Yeah. And presumably, yeah. You, you mentioned that you worked a lot. Yeah. That's got to be something that if you volunteer, you have to allocate time. It's not a yes. just show up and do a little yeah. bit here and yeah. there. there Maybe, depending on where you step into that hierarchy. All the work camps where we are going, or I'm talking about the work camp Europe, wherever you're going, like the local team is the basically most important team. I knew that in Belgrade, like the last, I call it like photo finish, last couple of weeks, or like a couple of months, it was just like where all the work kept on piling up. I was getting up like super early to make it like through all the meetings with the venue to go through all the notes, connect all the bits and pieces. And then because all of us, we have the day jobs, some of us being supported by the companies, some are not. So involvement of the people changed through time. And because it's a long process and specifically for work in Europe, you don't have all the themes, all the different teams. We had like 10 different teams. 
working all together, like at the same time, like the, the high level, you'll see like in the beginning, you have a huge impact on sponsors because they need to put up a call for sponsors. They need to sell all those packages. They need to see with the venue, how big is going to be expo area. There are just like so many things. Yeah, volunteers that they are coming in too late, like volunteers team, communications, communications team, it's the one that has been hit hardest and the longest yeah. because they like keep on putting all the things to the event because yeah, we had to like increase the number of organizers, but it is challenging. Yeah. It, yeah. As I said many times already, like it's a long process, but it's an amazing process. I've had a really interesting slight window into what is involved mm. at this event just because of the location of where we're at and seeing all the sort of backstage stuff. Really fascinating. And just as an example, the attention to detail to allow us to be in this room at this exact moment, the coordination that goes on there, you know, great big spreadsheets. And, and although I knew that on some level that was happening, that's a tiny part of a tiny part of a tiny part of the bigger event. And yet somebody's had to deal with that and take care of it. And it's absolutely amazing. Through the years, we learned, we learned on our mistakes. Mm. I'll call it mistakes. I'm doing the air quotes now. Mm. Because how the number of attendees grew, our problems grew as well. In Seville, all of a sudden, we had an amazing, amazing thing. People bring their kids. We're like, oh, we need to provide childcare service for the event. So we have, since 2016, we have the free childcare service for every work in Europe. Then all of a sudden, you have like more volunteers. You want more bigger exposure like in media. So you need to organize one room. Then all of a sudden, that room is too small. Then organize two rooms. Yes. Then you need to be like, hey, the venue is quite big. We need someone guiding. It's like, okay, so we need dedicated volunteer who will take speaker or whoever to the stage, who will take to media room. And how the number of attendees grew, our problems went genuinely in awe of the amount of things that are going on. Really remarkable. We're very lucky, though, to be back 2022. We've had a couple of years where, well, that hasn't been the case for the reason that everybody knows. We're all delighted that we're back. But we've had a real moment where everything got a bit shaky. The community, every community, not just WordPress, but every community forced online. And I just wondered what your thoughts were about the impact of that fatigue of Zoom calls and whether or not local events have kind of taken a hit in numbers. Certainly, I think where I live, the interest in turning up monthly or whatever it might be to these meetups, mm. when it's been online month after month after month, it seems like the interest is sort of slowly waning. So maybe we're at an inflection point where it will begin to pick up again. But yeah, just interested in your thoughts on that. Oh, yeah. When we started, I was so glad when we switched to online. I was in Bangkok waiting on the oh, work yeah. in Beja. Mm. And it was like, hey, it's going to happen. And then the team made the best decision ever. That will turn out to be like the best decision ever not to have it. Even though everyone were like super sad. We were like in Thailand, you know, just like waiting for that conference. And it's been in the making for so long. And the local team and everyone involved wanted so badly that conference to happen. And then I mean, we were there and someone said like, well, maybe, maybe just maybe we are not going to have it. And then they canceled. I'm like, yeah, what are we going to do? So we stayed in Thailand, came back. Then when online happened, every day I have two meetings. It's a Zoom meetings. I'm like, I'm not doing this again, like a conference. I can't do it. And then I was so happy, like when it happened that I again, get to see all the people involved. I was amazed by the number of people who signed up. Like I think 2020, eight, 9,000 people signed up. The good thing is that you have way more people being able to attend, to just join the event. But I was super sad after yeah. it ended yeah. because being involved so many years back to see all those people, hug everyone, talk to everyone when it ended. I was like, whoa, no, it felt so empty. I'm like, no, no, this is not happening. Yeah, I was glad that this was happening online. Also for, for us in Serbia, a couple of guys decided like, hey, we're not gonna go with online, but a couple of days. 
And I was so glad that I did because it kept something happening throughout the years. We are now in the limbo between those online events. Someone wants to, someone is waiting on the in-person events like to start happening all over again, meetups with the restrictions over. But yeah, in Serbia as well, you're going just a few now online. But yesterday on Contributors Day, as a part of the community team, we formed a plan that we're going to contact all the meetup organizers, asking how their involvement is now, because it's been so long, two or three years that um, no in-person meetup happened. So we're just going to remind them, ask them about the help, how we as a community can help them. People change jobs. A lot of things happen. In the meantime, during COVID, I got married, I got kids, but I'm still going to be involved and see how we can help. So now the focus is on community to revamp and to see just like, hey, how we can do with the meetups in person? Is it possible? Are those organizers who are like organizing those meetups, they going to do it or we need to look for someone else? from that meetup group. It's a kind of re-evaluation. Yes. We're going to start again and see where we're at right now. Yeah. yeah, it does feel like the involvement has gone down. But curiously, as you said at the top, 60% of the people who showed up to this event are new yeah. to the community. So there's clearly some hankering for it. And so maybe when those events get rebooted with whoever they are, yeah. then maybe it'll be the same. You know, 60% in the meetups will be new people. And that's very encouraging. Starting the day after tomorrow, we're going to see so many new meetups and like so interested. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see where we are next year. Let's just change focus a little bit. You mentioned a, mo- a moment ago about the fact that you're based in Serbia and Europe is, a, is an interesting continent. Lots and lots of countries, some big, some very small, lots and lots of languages so that the barrier literally may be impenetrable. For example, if you're in Serbia, that may be the only way that you can engage. A few months ago, there was some sort of coverage about diversity and whether or not the community organizing the team for WordCamp Europe had addressed that well enough. We actually did a podcast episode in which we aired those thoughts, so there is that to listen to. But the whole diversity debate isn't quite as straightforward, is it, in Europe, as it may be elsewhere, because it's not about the same things. Diversity might be language diversity, or it might be which country you've come from, or what have you. So let's just get into that. Europe is a strange place. (laughs) Europe is a strange place. Every year, we try so hard. I know even when I was involved, And we, as a community, we just need to keep on keeping on about diversity. We need to educate people. I know that I had to educate myself first. I had to go for all the meetups. So when we start the meetup, I'm doing the first talk I'm doing is about diversity, is about code of conduct. And then yet again, people need to be reminded about it. I'm sure like this year as well, organizing team uh, did a great job. But there's always, like every year, there's a, just a little bit of that sense that we could do a bit more, mm. like every year. And I've been haunted, you know, when you're like selecting teams, you've been involved in some decisions. I always had just a, a little bit like, maybe we could do more. When you see the organizing team, when you see event happening, I was like, yeah, well, just maybe if we started early, or maybe if we change this, or maybe if we put up a blog post, or maybe if we did something, something will be better. But what we are not noticing it that is getting better. It's never going to be perfect. Mm. But as long as we are talking and we are constantly repeating and like wanting to change, sooner or later, like we're going to be so close to that perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I know the difficulties I heard about. Uh, wasn't involved, but I heard about difficulties this year, organizing team and like just that limbo of that, is it going to happen? You know, so they organized like local team for Portugal, they organized in 2019 for 2020. And then like, yeah, it's not happening online. Then should we do like this year? Then, you know, some, some people from organized team dropped off because life happened in the meantime. So 2021, you kind of lost the momentum. Like 2022, you need to just like, hey, this year is actually happening. You know, when you do like two tries and you fail, I'm doing the air quotes again, you fail, like you just need to pick everyone up. You need to form a team because as I said, like this is a long event. Now we need someone ready who will dedicate the time, who will dedicate the passion, who will be willing to help. But yeah, I'm totally supporting the organizing team and all the decisions they made. So happy for them again. We are not going to reach that perfect, but as long as we are like longing for that, 
will be good. A couple of follow-up questions from that. The first one is, do you, on a personal level, when you sort of hear these criticisms from people, does it get you on a personal level or can you differentiate? Okay, that's what somebody thinks over there. That's fine. Okay, we'll try our best next time. You're giving up a lot of free time here. Yeah. So in the beginning, it was harder. You know, in the beginning, it was harder because you know how much you give yourself into, you know, organizing and you know that we all have different backgrounds and you know the what's the backstory of organizer being or the organizing team and you know that people are sacrificing their time they're sacrificing their families relationship with friends they can't be with their friends families and then you hear that someone says like hey well maybe that team they could change this and you'll be like because you know the both sides of the story you can't be like no like that's not but yet you can't get into argue I was a couple of times being part of the DLP drama and I realized that because of the language barrier, because we all different, that defending yourself, you're only going deeper, like deeper into the problem. So I always try to talk to that person. Hey, there are things that you're not aware something, but yeah, as I said, like highly opinionated community about everything. That's what I love about and That's what I it a little bit. When this event is over, presumably there's a process of going, okay, let's figure out what we did, what we did well, what could have been improved. Is there a thing like that? And can people like attendees, somebody like me, for example, can I put my opinion forward about, okay, next time, less of this and more of this? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. There's a process for that. Yeah. 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 That's a process in place that you put up the form like, hey, give us the feedback. My personal opinion is that like, you're not reading the, you know, the worst possible things. Luckily, we never had those. And you're not reading all those, the best things ever, like best work camp ever. You're looking, at least I am looking, for something that was constructive criticism. But yeah, you go through there and you know that you failed. I don't know, we, food could be better or something could be better. You're aware, but you're looking for the constructive criticism. And we always, like till now, like waited for like, about two weeks because two weeks is... Um, a period of time that people need to just think about everything. Yeah. Because if you give like today, if you give that form to attendees and be like, oh my God, it's so crazy. If you give that form to me, I just want the hat on the claw machine, but it is going to be like the best <laughs> work camp ever. Because I just want, we are waiting about two weeks just for people to breathe in, decompress, you know, sell their thoughts and then you give the attendees a survey to fill in. We did that every year and it turned out to be an amazing thing for the future reference. Team will also put up the handbook. They will put up the handbook of all the things that they've learned, challenges that they faced, what could be better, what could be improved, because we have the internal P2 for organizers, for teams to communicate. So yeah, that's their life probably uh, next month. They would just like decompress and just all the thoughts put together in one place for the future organizers. Are you here as an attendee this year or do you have any? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking because we started that and I love that rule, actually. Whoever was like the global lead for the previous year, you'll be like the keynote speaker for the next WorkCamp Europe. Like on track one, you'll do the talk. My talk was about community. And I knew that it's going to be emotional, but I never knew that it's going to be this emotional. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I had, I had tears, but I'm proud of those. It was emotional talk because those are all the things that I'm super passionate about. I'm super passionate about diversity. I'm super passionate about community in general. I'm super passionate about changing myself first and then helping change community for better. So many times, so many stories that I've heard about people just like attending one single meetup. And then they realize that, you know what, this is good. This is a solid foundation for the career change or change in life. I had one guy in Serbia attended our meetups. He was a hairdresser and I knew his face. He was constantly attending our meetups, but he was always super silent. He's like, no, 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 all good. I'm just like listening to talks, but he's a good guy. So after two years, he switched roles and he said like, finally, I'm doing the front end work. I got my first job. Thank you so much. Thanks to community 
it changed me in so many levels. So I did this talk and I completely stopped because all those images flashed in front of my eyes. I have a slide that how many, uh, how much this community and being involved, this whole involvement changed me as a person. I had all these images just like flashing because I've been through some like tough times, like everyone. And then I knew how much this whole community has been listening and helping supportive. And I basically stopped, just like froze at the stage. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. You're not gonna cry, you're gonna continue. I got the applause and just like, and that's the support I'm talking about. And I continued, but really personal talk for me. And I loved it. I loved the subject that I was sharing. And people say that I'm quite passionate and that can, I can make something happen. Final question, and it's a quick one. Will you be back next year? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Milan, thank you for chatting to me today. Thanks so much, Nathan, for having me.